Are you prepared to manage in a world without technology? Today, I'll reveal some crucial mistakes to avoid in those critical first 24 hours after an EMP attack. Let's jump into our first big don't. Trusting strangers. Here's the thing. After an EMP attack, the world as we know it changes. It's like hitting the reset button on society, and trust becomes a rare commodity. You can't afford to let your guard down with people you don't know. Imagine a blackout that affects thousands, with no guarantee of things ever coming back on. Food won't be readily available at the supermarket, gas stations will be dry, and communication will be non-existent. People will be scared, hungry, and desperate for survival. That desperation can bring out the worst in us. Someone might approach you acting friendly, claiming to be a lost survivor in need of help. They might offer to trade something valuable for food or water, or they might even try to weasel their way into your shelter. In reality, they could be sizing you up for an opportunity to steal your supplies, or worse. Here's the key takeaway. Prioritize your safety and the safety of your family above all else. Don't open your doors to strangers unless you're absolutely certain of their intentions. Form alliances with people you know and trust. Neighbors, friends, family. If you do encounter someone new, approach with caution. In the aftermath of an EMP attack, sticking together will be crucial for survival. But how do you build trust in a world where everyone is looking out for themselves? Let's discuss a few tips I use. First, and the most obvious, is to start with your immediate circle. Talk to your neighbors, friends, and family. Discuss an emergency plan and establish clear communication channels. Look for people with complementary skills. Maybe you have a stockpile of food, but your neighbor is a mechanic. By working together, you can all benefit. Make sure you are cautious, but not exclusionary. Don't shut everyone out, but be smart about who you trust. Observe people's actions, not just their words. Establish clear boundaries and expectations. If you do decide to share resources with someone new, set clear expectations up front. Remember, trust takes time to build, even in the best of circumstances. After an EMP attack, it will be even more important to be patient and discerning. By following these tips, you can start to build a community of trust that will help you all weather the storm. It might seem like a no-brainer that fire is important after an EMP attack. You'll need it for cooking, keeping warm, especially at night, and maybe even boiling water for sanitation. But here's the thing, fire is a double-edged sword. I remember a time when I went camping with my buddies. We forgot to pack flashlights, and let me tell you, the darkness was overwhelming. Disorienting, even. Now imagine an entire city plunged into that kind of darkness. Every flicker of light becomes a beacon. People, especially those desperate for survival, will be drawn to it like moths to a flame. Suddenly, your cozy campfire becomes a giant target attracting unwanted attention. This could lead to confrontations over resources at best, or worse, someone looking to take advantage of you and your family. There's also the danger of accidental fires. Without a functioning fire department, even a small spark could turn into a major disaster. Think about it. No way to call for help. No water pressure to fight the flames. It could consume your entire shelter in minutes. So, how do we utilize fire safety in this new world? Let's go through a few key points. Conceal your fire source. Build your fire in a pit or use rocks to create a barrier. The more you can block the light, the less visible you'll be. Think about using reflective materials like metal sheeting or even tin foil to further deflect the glow. Burn wood wisely. Opt for dry, dead wood that produces minimal smoke. Less smoke means less chance of attracting attention. And it'll help you conserve your fuel source. Dead wood is also easier to light and burns hotter, which means you'll need less of it to get the job done. Make sure you only use fire when absolutely necessary. Cooking can be done during daylight hours, for instance, minimizing your reliance on fire at night. Explore alternative cooking methods like solar ovens or even friction fire starting. Learn this skill before an EMP, trust me. Invest in alternative lighting like solar lanterns, oil lamps, or even headlamps. These provide light without the risk associated with open flames. Look for options that are fuel efficient and easy to maintain. 
Wind-up lanterns are a great option, as they require no external power source and can be recharged with a simple crank. Glow sticks can also provide a temporary light source in a pinch. Fire can be your friend, but only if you treat it with respect. Think of it as a valuable tool to be used strategically. By being smart and using alternative lighting options whenever possible, you can stay safe and warm without putting yourself and your loved ones at risk. Remember, in a world without electricity, darkness is your friend. Use it to your advantage and let fire be a helping hand, not a liability. This next tip might surprise you. Don't waste resources. Now this might sound obvious, but in the chaos of an EMP attack, it's easy to panic and overconsume. Remember, after the initial shock wears off, reality will set in. Resources like food, water, fuel, and medical supplies will be scarce. An EMP attack would disrupt supply chains for who knows how long. That means the food and water you have on hand might be all you get for a very long time. Here's the good news. With a little planning and resourcefulness, you can significantly increase your chances of long-term survival. Let's go over some key things to keep in mind. Stockpile wisely. FEMA recommends storing at least a three-day supply of food and water, but in the aftermath of an EMP, think weeks, maybe even months. Focus on non-perishable foods with a long shelf life, like canned goods, dried beans, and rice. Don't forget about things like salt, pepper, and basic spices to add some flavor to your meals. When it comes to water, invest in a good quality water filtration system or purification tablets. Also, just because you have a stockpile doesn't mean you can eat and drink everything at once. Rationing your supplies will ensure they last as long as possible. There are plenty of resources available online that can help you create a rationing plan based on your family's needs. Think outside the box. Supermarket shelves will be bare, but that doesn't mean you can't find food. Look for alternative food sources like hunting, fishing, or even learning how to grow your own vegetables. Explore alternative cooking methods like solar ovens or even fireless cookers. These can help you conserve precious fuel. Water is life. We all know this. But after an EMP, clean water becomes even more crucial. Here's the thing. A gallon of water per person per day is the recommended amount according to FEMA. But during a crisis, you might need to stretch that further. Learn how to collect rainwater, purify water from streams, and even how to reuse gray water, used water from sinks and showers for tasks like flushing toilets. Also, don't forget about medical supplies, basic first aid kits, pain relievers, and any medications you or your family rely on are essential. You won't have access to pharmacies or hospitals, so ensuring you have a good stock of these supplies is crucial. By being resourceful and managing your supplies effectively, you can ensure you have what you need to survive in the long haul. Remember, every drop of water, every bite of food, and every dose of medication is precious. Don't waste them. Our beloved technology, phones, laptops, tablets, are an extension of ourselves in today's world. But after an EMP attack, Forget about scrolling through social media or checking the latest news. Those gadgets will be nothing more than expensive paperweights. Think about the last time your phone died. Mild panic sets in, right? Now imagine that feeling amplified a thousand times. No calls, no texts, no GPS, no internet. It's a scary thought, but something we need to prepare for. Here's the science behind it. An EMP attack basically fries the electronic circuits in any device within range. It's like a giant microwave oven, zapping everything electronic. So your fancy smartphone? Kaput. Your car with its computerized engine? Dead in the water. The Heritage Foundation, a respected think tank, estimates that an EMP attack could cripple 99% of America's electricity-dependent services. Think about that. Almost everything we rely on daily would be out of commission. So, what does this mean for you and me? It means we need to shift gears and embrace a more low-tech way of life. Here's how to get started. Become a master of the manual. Learn how to use basic tools like a compass, a map, and a good old-fashioned hand crank can opener. 
These might seem like relics of the past, but in an EMP situation, they'll be your golden ticket. Brush up on your map reading skills. Forget about Google Maps. Invest in a good quality physical map of your area and learn how to navigate using it. Practice orienteering, which is using a compass and map to find your way around. Explore traditional methods of communication like ham radios, signal mirrors, or even smoke signals. These might seem like something out of a survival show, but they can be incredibly effective in an emergency. Also, embrace self-reliance. This is the key takeaway. Don't rely on technology that won't be there. Instead, focus on learning skills and gathering tools that will help you survive without electricity. It might feel daunting at first, but trust me, mastering these low-tech skills can be empowering. Think of it as an adventure, a chance to reconnect with a simpler way of life. Plus, it will make you much more prepared for anything that comes your way, EMP or not. In the aftermath of an EMP attack, finding sustenance will be a top priority. But here's the thing, desperation can lead to some serious mistakes. So don't just go munching on any wild plant or animal you come across. Remember when I mentioned how I went on a camping trip with some friends, completely unprepared? We were lost, hungry, and someone suggested eating these bright red berries that looked delicious. Luckily, we had a seasoned outdoorsman in the group who stopped us just in time. Turns out those berries were highly poisonous. Here's the point. Not everything that looks edible actually is. The USDA warns that some common plants like wild mushrooms and certain berries can be deadly. The last thing you want in a survival situation is to accidentally poison yourself. So, what can you do? Remember, knowledge is power. Before disaster strikes, learn to identify safe edible plants and animals in your region. Invest in a good field guide or take a wilderness survival course. There's a wealth of information available online as well. But remember, in an EMP scenario, that information might not be readily accessible. If you're absolutely desperate and need to try an unfamiliar food source, do it very cautiously. Start with a tiny sample and wait several hours to see if there's any reaction. But remember, this should be a last resort. Proper knowledge is far better than a risky gamble. Don't rely on just one source of food, like canned goods or stored grains. This can lead to serious nutritional deficiencies and health issues down the line. Think about the World Food Program. They emphasize the importance of a varied diet to prevent malnutrition. In a post-EMP world, hunting, fishing, foraging, and even growing your own vegetables become vital skills. You can diversify your food stock by rotating your stored food. This will help keep things fresh and prevent spoilage. Also, make sure to plant high-yield crops. Research vegetables and grains that are easy to grow and produce a high yield, meaning they provide a lot of food for the space they take up. And explore alternative food sources. Learn how to hunt, fish, and forage for wild foods safely. By diversifying your food sources, you'll ensure you're getting the essential nutrients your body needs to stay healthy and resilient in the face of adversity. Speaking of food safety, let's address another common mistake. With refrigerators out of commission, perishable food will spoil quickly. Consuming spoiled food is a recipe for food poisoning, which can be particularly dangerous when medical services are disrupted. You can avoid it by inspecting food carefully. Look for signs of spoilage like off smells, slimy textures, or unusual colors. Prioritize non-perishables. Focus on eating canned goods, dried foods, and sealed packages first. Also, make sure you cook thoroughly. If you must eat perishable food, cook it thoroughly to kill any potential bacteria. Remember, in a survival situation, maintaining your health is paramount. Avoiding food poisoning is one crucial step towards achieving that. In a disaster situation, our first instinct might be to jump in the car and get out as soon as possible. But after an EMP attack, hitting the road could be a big mistake. Think about the last time there was a major power outage in your area. Now imagine that on a national scale. Roads will be clogged with abandoned vehicles, traffic lights will be out, and GPS systems will be useless. Here's the key takeaway don't travel without a plan. FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, 
strongly advises having a well-defined evacuation route and knowing alternative paths before you even consider leaving. Let's go over some tips. Make sure to map it out. Before disaster strikes, use physical maps to chart your escape route. Mark potential safe havens like remote towns or national parks and avoid known high-risk areas. Be prepared for the unexpected and expect roadblocks, detours, and unexpected obstacles. Carry enough supplies for your journey – food, water, first aid kit, tools – and have a backup plan in case your primary route becomes impassable. Travel light, travel smart. Pack only the essentials and try to travel light. Remember, gas will be scarce, so fuel efficiency is key. While we're at it, let's also address another travel-related mistake – leaving home unnecessarily. Your home, if properly prepared, can be your best defense in an EMP situation. Think of it as your fortress. Venturing out puts you at greater risk from a variety of threats – hostile individuals desperate for resources, wild animals displaced from their habitat, or even harsh environmental conditions. The Department of Homeland Security recommends having a well-stocked emergency kit and a plan to shelter in place during disasters. This means utilizing your home's resources and establishing routines for survival. So, when should you leave? Only for essential activities like gathering food or water. If you absolutely must travel, follow the planning tips we discussed earlier. Stick to daylight hours when travel is safer and easier, and make sure you're back before dark. Remember, leaving home without a clear purpose and plan can lead to unnecessary risks and deplete your precious supplies. Stay safe, stay put, and only venture out when absolutely necessary. Now, I know some of us thrive in the energy of a big city, but after an EMP attack, those bustling streets will become chaotic, and not the friendly kind. Think about it. No working traffic lights, no running water, no way to communicate. Imagine the frustration, the desperation. Cities will become powder kegs ready to explode. Here's the science behind it. Cities are densely populated. That means a lot of people competing for a limited amount of resources. The EMP Commission, a group of experts who study the effects of EMP attacks, predicts food supplies in urban areas could run out within a mere 72 hours. With public services collapsing and law enforcement overwhelmed, chaos will reign. Looting, riots, and gang activity – these are the realities you could face in a city after an EMP. Sounds like a scene from a dystopian movie, right? Well, in this scenario, it could be your reality. So what's the alternative? Here's the golden rule – avoid large crowds in cities. Instead, seek refuge in a rural or remote area. Think small towns, villages, even national parks. These areas offer several advantages including more resources. Rural areas tend to have readily available natural resources like water sources, huntable wildlife, and potentially even land for growing your own food. There's also less competition. With fewer people around, there's less competition for those resources, making it easier to establish self-sufficiency. Also. Remote areas offer greater safety. The chances of encountering violence or social unrest are significantly lower in rural areas. Remember, survival is all about minimizing risks and maximizing your chances of finding and protecting resources. In a crowded city after an EMP, those chances are slim. The countryside, while not without its challenges, offers a much better shot at survival. For many of us, Prescription drugs are essential for managing chronic health conditions. But after an EMP attack, that life-saving pill bottle could become an empty promise. Here's the reality check. Access to medication will be severely limited. The FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, reports that a staggering 40% of finished drugs and a whopping 80% of active ingredients come from overseas. That means our supply chains are incredibly reliant on a functioning global network. An EMP attack would cripple that network, leaving pharmacies and hospitals bare. Imagine running out of your heart medication, your insulin, or your seizure medication. In a world without power and transportation, refilling those prescriptions would be next to impossible. So what can you do? First thing I'd suggest is you go talk to your doctor. Have an open conversation with your doctor about your specific needs. 
Discuss the possibility of stockpiling a reasonable supply of your essential medications. There might be limitations, but any extra you can have on hand will be invaluable. Explore alternatives. Research natural remedies and alternative treatments for your condition. There might be herbal options or lifestyle changes that can help manage your symptoms, especially in the short term. Also, learn about the medicinal properties of local plants in your area. There's a wealth of knowledge available online and in herbal remedy books. Remember, this knowledge should never replace the advice of a medical professional, but it could be a helpful backup in a crisis. Here's the bottom line. Being proactive about your health is crucial. Don't rely solely on medications that might become unavailable. Explore alternative treatments and find sustainable solutions to manage your health in a world without pharmacies. It might seem obvious, but dehydration is a silent killer that can sneak up on you quickly after an EMP attack. When clean water becomes scarce, staying hydrated becomes the number one priority. The Mayo Clinic warns that severe dehydration can lead to confusion, rapid heartbeat, and even shock, potentially resulting in death. So how do you avoid this fate? Here's the key. Be vigilant. Monitor yourself and others for signs of dehydration. These could include dry mouth, which is a common early warning sign. Your mouth will feel parched and you might have difficulty swallowing. Similarly, reduced urine output is a clear indicator that your body isn't getting enough fluids. If you experience any of these symptoms, prioritize rehydration immediately. Don't wait until you're feeling desperate. Now let's talk about securing this precious resource. Remember, purification is key. Never drink untreated water from streams, lakes, or even rainwater. It might contain harmful bacteria or parasites. Always purify water by boiling it for at least one minute or using reliable purification tablets. Collect rainwater. Invest in a rainwater collection system. Even a simple tarp and bucket setup can provide a valuable source of water. Explore natural sources. Learn how to identify safe sources of water in your environment, like freshwater springs or streams. Remember, these will still need to be purified before consumption. By following these tips, you can ensure you and your loved ones stay hydrated and healthy, even after the water stops flowing from the tap. We've covered a lot of practical tips for surviving an EMP attack, securing resources, finding shelter, staying safe. But here's something we often overlook, our mental health. Let's face it, an EMP attack would be a terrifying experience. Imagine the world you know, with all its comforts and conveniences suddenly gone. No electricity, no communication, no way of knowing what the future holds. It's enough to make anyone anxious, depressed, and maybe even feel hopeless. Here's the thing. The American Psychological Association warns that prolonged stress can have serious consequences. It can cloud your judgment, making it difficult to make clear decisions, and even weaken your immune system, making you more susceptible to illness. So, how do we take care of our mental health in a world turned upside down? Remember, routine is your friend. In the chaos, Create a sense of normalcy by establishing a daily routine. Get up at a reasonable time, have set meal times, and dedicate time to specific tasks. This structure will provide a sense of control and stability. Exercise is a powerful stress reliever. Go for walks, find ways to exercise indoors, or even help out with physical tasks around your shelter. Physical activity releases endorphins, those feel-good chemicals in your brain that can boost your mood and reduce anxiety. Calm your mind. Techniques like mindfulness meditation can help you manage stress and focus on the present moment. There are plenty of resources online and in libraries to learn about these practices. Also, make sure you talk it out. Social interaction is crucial for our well-being. Connect with your family and anyone else you're sheltering with. Talk about your fears, share stories, and offer support to each other. A strong community can be a powerful buffer against the emotional challenges that come with an EMP. Remember, taking care of your mental health isn't a luxury. It's a necessity for survival. Don't be afraid to ask for help from someone you trust or even explore online resources that can offer guidance and support. 
Ignoring your mental well-being can lead to breakdowns that can seriously jeopardize your ability to cope and survive in a difficult situation. Let's talk about something not so glamorous, but absolutely essential. Hygiene and sanitation. After an EMP attack, with public services down the drain, literally. Keeping yourself and your community clean becomes a top priority. Here's why. Remember when I mentioned how I went hiking with my friends? Let's just say we weren't big on hand washing, mostly because we were in the wilderness and figured it wouldn't be a big deal. Needless to say, a few of us ended up with some nasty stomach bugs. It was a gross and uncomfortable experience, but a good reminder of how important proper hygiene is, even when you're roughing it. Now imagine that scenario amplified a thousand times. An EMP attack could lead to a breakdown of sanitation systems, creating a breeding ground for disease. The World Health Organization warns that poor hygiene and sanitation can trigger outbreaks of diseases like cholera, dysentery, and typhoid fever. Not exactly the souvenirs you want to bring back from an EMP apocalypse. Waste disposal matters. With no functioning sewage systems, you'll need alternative methods for waste disposal. Dig latrines at least 200 feet away from water sources in living areas. This might not be ideal, but it's crucial to prevent contamination. Also remember, never drink untreated water. Always purify water by boiling it, filtering it, or using reliable purification tablets. This applies to all water, even for cleaning. Regular hand washing with soap, even in minimal amounts, can drastically reduce the spread of germs. Keep a small container of soap and a basin of purified water readily available for hand washing. Get creative with showers. Running water might be a luxury, but that doesn't mean you can't keep yourself clean. Use collected rainwater for improvised showers or sponge baths. It might not be a spa experience, but it will make a big difference in your personal hygiene. Remember, overlooking these practices can lead to serious health crises that could be deadly in a post-EMP world. Don't let something as simple as hand washing turn into a life-threatening situation. Your shelter is your haven, your sanctuary after an EMP attack, but a safe haven needs defenses. I remember a time my neighborhood experienced a power outage during a bad storm. It felt unsettling, knowing people might be walking around in the dark. Now imagine a situation where the power's out, there's no law enforcement, and resources are scarce. An unsecured shelter can become a target for desperate individuals. The National Institute of Justice, a U.S. government agency, reports that home invasions significantly increase during times of social unrest. This is a harsh reality but one we need to be prepared for. So, how do you turn your shelter into a fortress? Let's go over some key security tips. First, fortify your entry points. Strengthen your doors and windows. Consider adding deadbolts, metal bars, or even plywood sheets for extra protection. Create barricades. Have furniture or other heavy objects readily available to quickly block entry points in case of an intrusion. Keep your eyes on the prize. Establish a lookout system. Whether it's assigning someone to watch for trouble or setting up strategically placed mirrors to see who's approaching. Set up simple traps or alarms around your perimeter to alert you of potential intruders. Even empty cans tied to strings can create a noise deterrent. Remember, by securing your shelter, you're ensuring your safety and protecting your resources. Here's the thing, knowledge is only half the battle. The Red Cross emphasizes the importance of regular drills to truly be prepared for an emergency. Imagine a fire breaking out in your shelter. The chaos, the confusion, everyone scrambling. But what if everyone knew exactly what to do, where to go, and who had what responsibility? That's the power of practice drills. So what kind of drills should you practice? You can start by practicing fire drills. Practice evacuating your shelter quickly and safely in case of a fire. Also, be sure you have evacuation plans. Run practice drills for different scenarios, like a looter attack or a natural disaster. Everyone should know the escape routes and have a designated meeting point. Practice basic first aid procedures and know how to respond to other potential emergencies. Here's the bottom line. Regular practice drills reduce panic and increase efficiency in a real crisis. Don't be caught off guard by an emergency. Be prepared to respond quickly and effectively. Let's also not forget about your tools and weapons, 
important for your security. Think about it. A dull knife is useless for hunting or self-defense. A rusty shovel might break when you need it most. Just like your shelter, your tools and weapons need to be in top condition. The National Shooting Sports Foundation recommends regular cleaning and maintenance of firearms and other tools. Sharpen knives, check the integrity of your equipment, and make sure everything is working properly. Keep spare parts and repair kits on hand to address any potential issues. Remember, a well-maintained tool or weapon can make the difference between life and death. Don't neglect your equipment and leave yourself defenseless in a time of need. By following these tips, you'll be well on your way to creating a secure haven and being prepared for whatever comes your way after an EMP attack. A little effort now can make a world of difference when the lights go out. Speaking of surviving a catastrophe, click the video on screen now to learn about the 17 items you can't be without in a disaster.